RayWare 2 comes loaded with some powerful new features. Scan repair, model basing, and STL export are designed to improve your 3D printing workflow. In this video, we'll be working through each of these new features to give you a sense of how they function in the greater context of RayWare. But remember, these are pro level and premium level features only, so you will have to have a RayWare Pro or Premium account to access the features that we're going to demonstrate today. So to begin, start Rayware and let's set it up to print. So when we first fire up Rayware, we're going to be greeted with this screen. Uh, we're going to select Pro 95 because we're going to be working with Sprint Ray Pro today. Sprint Ray resins and then Sprint Ray die model 10 is going to be the specific resin we're going to use. Um, we're going to set the layer thickness to 100 microns. Once we've selected the printer, material, and layer thickness, we can press apply. We're going to be faced, as usual, with the Sprint Ray Pro build platform. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my model in here. This is a lower jaw raw STL scan. Um, it is not going to be closed, and you're going to see right away, Rayware is going to pick up on that. It's going to say, you know what, man, that's that's not cool. That is not going to print. That's an unrepaired scan that you brought in. Um, and we can verify that ourselves. Just flip it upside down. All this black area basically means that this scan is not closed. It is not watertight. This thing is not going to print. It's going to be a failure if we try to push it through right now. So first, we got to get this thing closed and we got to get a base on it so that we can print it. So once I select my model and it turns blue, I'm going to go over here to my tools section. I'm going to open that up. We're going to see four new tools. Today, we're going to be dealing with the bottom three. So to start off with, I need to get this thing based. So I'm going to select scan repair selected. Rayware is now going to automatically close this scan and it's also going to put on this beautiful base. This is going to be a nice flat level surface. It's going to adhere perfectly to the build platform. Um, and I can verify this by selecting the model, looking underneath. This beautiful horseshoe right here means, yep, this is going to print no problem. Uh, and Rayware is no longer flagging any issues. So that's fantastic. But let's say I don't want this thing to take 35 minutes. I don't want it to be this large file. And I think, you know, this is maybe a little bit excessive in terms of how much area uh, it's added. So I want to trim some of this off. No problem. So I select the model press cut selected, this is going to produce a plane. Now anything below this plane, when I select OK, is going to get deleted. Anything above is going to stay. So I'm looking around here my model, I'm thinking that I can afford to lose about this much of the base. Um, now this is useful if you want it to print more quickly. It's useful if you want it to use less resin when it prints, or if you want to reduce the file size for when you finally export it, which we're going to do today. Um, it's just a nice feature to have, and it allows you to sort of make that final manipulation step on your model to get it to look the way that you want. So here we go. I've got my beautiful trimmed model. Uh, I've still got a nice, beautiful horseshoe base. No problem there. And now this print is only going to take 25 minutes, and it's only going to use 8 milliliters of resin. So we've really done a nice, a nice job on this. We do have a little bit of sort of excess material over here. So I'm going to want to make sure that that gets cleaned up. Um, whether I pull this into a third party software and, and remove it later, um, or I want to use a bunch of plane cuts to kind of uh, get it all off of there. Um, I'm not going to do it right now just because it's a little bit time consuming. I will, however, show you, um, we're going to remove some of this excess area here behind uh, 231. Um, and we're going to do that by performing it basically a second plane cut. So I'm going to grab my model, rotate my gimbal so that it's at about 90 degrees from the platform. Um, and I'm looking at that thinking, yeah, I can kind of get a nice cut on that piece there. So I'm gonna press cut selected. I'm gonna move my plane up until I think that I've got some of that sufficient um, area below it that I wanna get rid of, hit okay. And then it's gonna go ahead and just cut that right off. Um, you know, just make a couple quick clean cuts to the model uh, that are just really gonna make it easier, a little bit simpler and, and honestly make it aesthetically quite a bit more pleasing as well. So the last thing that we're going to do is now that we have edited our file and gotten it to a place that, that we like and, and that we're happy with, we're going to go ahead and actually export this model uh, as an STL file. So I'm going to press the export selected button. What this is going to do is it's going to take all the changes that we've made. So the plane cut, the basing, and it's going to save them all as one essentially universal 3D printing file as an STL. This will allow us to pull it into another software, whether it's Mesh Mixer for more editing or a third party print prep software, because we want to use, let's say, a different printer to print this model than our, than our Moonray or Sprintray Pro. Um, that's what this allows us to do. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope that you found it informative. And as always, reach out to us at customer support if you have any questions.